I'm Maham Tariq from Skill Curb and in this video you'll learn how to import data in Cloud Big Table and then query on that data with the help of Java HP's client and Dataflow. The dataset that we'll use in this lab is about New York City buses. It is available at the Google Cloud Big Table public datasets. One way to communicate with Cloud Big Table is through the Cloud Big Table HP's client for Java. It's a customized version of Apache HP's client. It enables you to write Java applications that communicate with Bigtable through the open source HBase API. Google Cloud Dataflow is a cloud-based data processing service for both batch and real-time data streaming applications. We'll use it to import the dataset. We'll run the queries on data using Java application which will be imported from GitHub. Let's have a look at the steps involved. Firstly, we will log into our Google Cloud account and open Google Cloud Console. After activating Cloud Shell, we will create a Cloud Big Table instance, a table and a column family. Then we will enable Dataflow API and import a set of sequence files from Cloud Storage. After that, we will import the code from GitHub. The code performs lookups, scans and applies filters on the data. We can visualize these results on the map maker. In the end, we will delete the instance and the table. Now let's get started. Open your browser in the incognito mode, go to cloud.google.com. If you don't have a Google account, you need to click on get started for free. I have a Google account, so I'll click on sign in. After signing in, open the Google Cloud console. Firstly, activate the Google Cloud Shell. In Cloud Shell, set the environment variables for instance, table and cluster. You also need them for number of nodes and region. Then enable the Cloud Bigtable APIs by running the command gcloud services enable bigtable.googleapis.com and bigtableadmin.googleapis.com. Now we can create the instance with a single create instance command. Now it's time to populate the CBT configuration file and then create a table and a column family. We can do this by running the echo and cbt commands. Next step is to import data. For that, enable the Cloud Dataflow API first. Now you can import a set of sequence files from Cloud Bigtable public datasets. We'll now write the run import bus data jobs command to do that. We need to specify the number of worker nodes and the location of the sequence files. Parameters will also pass the instance ID, the table ID, and the source folder where the dataset is placed. You can monitor the job in the Cloud Dataflow UI. Also, you can view the load on your Cloud Bigtable instance with its monitoring UI. Let's open it. Currently, it's showing the status as running. It should take 5 minutes for the entire import and then the status will change to succeeded. Now let's go back into the Cloud Shell and run the git clone command to get the java code to run queries on the imported data. Before running any more commands, first let's open the editor to have a look at the code. The first query we'll perform is simple row lookup. We can get the data for a bus on M86 SPS line on June 1, 2017 from 12 am to 1 am. A vehicle with ID NYCT5824 is on the bus line then. With that information, we can deduce the row key. The result should contain the most recent location of the bus within that hour. But you want to see all the locations, so set the maximum number of versions on the GET request. Open the Cloud Shell again and to run this query. This command will give us a list of latitudes and longitudes for that bus over the hour. You can copy paste the latitudes and longitudes into the MapMaker app 
to visualize the results. Now let's open the MathMaker app. It will ask you to create a free account. After doing so, you can add a new layer, give layer a name and copy paste the values and then click on import. It will show you the locations of the bus over the hour. Now let's view all the data for the bus line for that hour. We can use scans for that purpose. Scans are most common way to read big table data. You can read a range of contiguous rows or multiple ranges of rows from big table. By specifying row key prefix or specifying beginning and ending row keys. The scan code looks pretty similar to the get code. You give scanner a starting position and then indicate you only want rows for M86 SBS bus line within the hour, denoted by timestamp. Run the command on cloud shell to get results. We can again copy paste the results on MapMaker app to visualize them. And we'll perform a multi-range scan. We'll address the case when you care about many bus lines in an area. We'll focus on the Manhattan bus line by introducing this multi-range filter. Now let's run the command to get the longitudes and latitudes and visualize our final query results now. We'll add the last layer. Now if you only need rows that contain specific values or partial rows, you can use a filter with your read request. Filters allow you to be highly selective in the data that you want. You will filter on buses heading east and buses heading west and create separate heat maps for each. By comparing the two heat maps, you'd be able to see the differences in the routes as well as notice differences in the pacing. But MapMaker app will only allow up to 100 values in a layer in the free version. But you can still create layers and visualize the buses going in different directions. Now we have reached the end of our lab. To avoid any incurring charges to your Google platform account for the resources used in this lab, you should delete your instance. We can do that by running this command. I hope you found this lab useful. Please leave us a comment and share your experience in running this lab with us. See you next time.